All right, let's see who hops on, if anybody does hop on. Do a little late-night celebration here for the Yankees who come from and win. And so Toronto Blue Jays salvaging a series. Um, they don't get swept by the Blue Jays, thankfully. Um, but the Blue Jays did take two of three, so they did win the series. Um, but <clears throat> today was a heck of a lot better, uh, you know, game. So Florida Native, hey, how are you? And again... It was a necessary win for the Yankees. It was good to see some of the bats wake up. Not all of them, but some of them. It's good to see Giancarlo Sampson hit that big home run. Juan Soto, I think, was 3-4 with a big home run, right? Jack is in the house. There he is. What's going on, my man? Well, smack that like button, gang, if you don't mind. Um, And again, you know, Juan Soto hit that bomb, and Aaron Judge Hit the key hit in the, in the top of the ninth inning. They went from a 4-2 deficit to a 6-4 lead. And Clay Holmes came in and closed it out. So for a very, very <clears throat> much need to win for the Yankees. They were on a three-game losing streak, and they needed to win tonight. And they did that. Marcus Stroman kept him in the game through the sixth inning. Not all the way out through it, but um, he took him into the sixth inning. And then they brought in Victor Gonzalez, Ian Hamilton, and run some other guys too. So, um, But... At the end of the day, the Yankees won, and they needed to win. Now they have off tomorrow, and then they got the Rays come in, and then the A's, and then you have Milwaukee and, and Baltimore. So, um, Melo, I hope he's a long-time Yankee. He damn looks like one tonight, that's for sure. Carlos, what's good, my man? Yeah, nice one, a necessary one. Absolutely necessary. So, um, I like when they come. And, it's, again, it's, it's, this just shows that this is how you know, – how, capable this roster actually is even when they're in the hole they can come back and stay patient out of consigliere's in the house prime minister of texas is here oh timothy what's gap what's good my man yeah we definitely needed that one desperately we definitely needed it and again they got it you know and they're 13 and 6 now heading into an off day tomorrow much needed off day and, uh, and then they got another tough series with the tampa rays and then they have the oakland a's nfb's in the house baby yeah, by the way, sorry I didn't go lay, uh, live earlier. I just uh, That's a tough time to go live for me after, after a 3 o'clock game. So, like, cooking dinner for all my kids and all that stuff. So, I could not go live. Um, so, but I wanted to come out here and celebrate with you tonight and see who's going to come on with me. So, I appreciate you all coming on. And if he's in the house and the console Yeti, we got the two big dogs that are up in this place, man, right now. And Trevino has, I mean, again, another clutch hit from Trevino. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yesterday he played a part. Him and Oswaldo played a big part in manufacturing the, the few runs that they had yesterday. So, you know, uh, yeah, strike zone's a man. Too. And if he's the man, he's the man, man. <laughs> um, again, you know, yeah, we're not seeing, I mean, even Glaber Torres joined the hit parade. So that was nice. That was nice. He's still got a way to go, but it was nice to see him join the hit party. Daniel Berry Sports is in the house. You know, I got to yeah, I got to take care of the family. I got three young girls, Mello, so I got to feed them dinner. I got you know, then I got to do dinner with my wife, and it's <clears throat> it's got to be done. So, and then once everybody's down, once everybody's chilling, then I can come up here live. And if I have time, everybody's sleeping, I can come on live and. You know, thankfully, I'm able to come up in here and celebrate with all of you, which is fantastic. Soto definitely, yes, he did, Consigliere. He continued to crank. Yes, he did. And Judge came through right when we needed him to come through. You know, that two-run that two run single in the ninth inning, man. Again, Stanton took us from 4-2 to 4-3 with that moonshot of his. And then we just continued to pile on. You know, and it was a good home run by Juan Soto, too. He almost had two. He had that double off the center field wall. So, and, um, of course, was it Dalton Varshaw? I think, he, what did he have, two today against the Yankees? So, you know, he hit them. Talbot's in the house. Long time, dude. How you been, man? Yeah. Oh, it was good to see you. All right. I'm glad you went live after the game, man. That's fantastic, brother. I'm glad you went live, man. So, it's always nice to go live when they win. It's much better when they lose. <laughs> you got a lot of frustrated, unhappy people. So, and I'm rightfully so. When they lose, we're we're just angry. We're happy. Or we're we're happy when they win. We're sad when they lose. So, right, Joseph. 
Yeah, Judge and Stanton came through. Yeah, I'm I'm just glad Glaber Torres joined the hit party late in the game too. That was good to see. I hope I hope he can build on that even a little bit. You know, um, and we'll see. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, man. J, J Pals, what's good? What is good? Yeah, we broke you well, on a road trip. Yeah, it was a three and three road trip. So, um, yeah, we won two two out of three, and then we lost two out of three. So, you're right about that, though. Um, I'll take that. You know, thirteen and six, and let's see. <clears throat> we'll see. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you saw, but uh, Mike King, like he had a no no hitter through like seven, almost through seven innings. He wound up not. They wound up losing the Padres one nothing, but he had. It was like seven and two thirds of really good pitching, really good pitching. Now let me see if the pull up the scores here. Here we go. Who won? Who lost? The Red Sox won two nothing over the Guardians. The looking for the Orioles. Orioles won four to two, so they they're staying. You know they're staying right behind us, right behind us, man. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the defense has been pretty reeling right now, Joseph. You're right about that. They're uh, they need to work on improving the, the defensive component of the baseball game. They really do. So it's definitely affecting some people more than others, like Libra Torres. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just you know. Soto is really bringing the value right now. It's pretty unbelievable, Josh. All right. Oh, nice man. Friend, come out. I I went. So I, I went oh, well, several years ago. My wife made it, and I made a trip out of it. We went to see a Minnesota Yankees game in I think it's called Target Field, and then we went to the Mall of America out there. Uh, it was a pretty cool weekend, and I and, and it's a pretty stadium. Target Field is a nice stadium. It really is NFA. So you definitely would enjoy it if you go out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope we can, at the very least, break even, but hopefully do better than break even. I'll take a 4-2 and two home stand against the Rays and the A's. I'll definitely take that, man. I mean, I really would. I appreciate the kind words, Timothy, for shouting out strike zone, man, NFA. That's right. Good, he does good work, man. The defense, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they have to tighten that up, Tyler. They definitely need to tighten up the defense. There's no denying that. It's just they do. And it's collectively a lot of guys, and it's mostly in the infield, or pretty much all in the infield. So their, their outfield defense has been pretty stellar. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was sad about the AC. Yeah, I mean, yeah. A situation is pretty depressing, to be honest with you. you know, feel bad for the fans. Feel bad for the players. They just have, you know, crappy ownership, and hopefully they'll get new, better ownership and, you know, and take that team into a better direction. They really, really do. So, and Joseph, I think they will open the checkbook. They know there's one reason why they didn't splurge in free agency because they know they're gonna have to open up the checkbook for Soto. You know. Like, you know, like it would have been dumb to pay double for Snell. It would have been dumb to pay double for Montgomery because that would have made it harder for them to. That's less money that they would have to allocate for Juan Soto next year. So, you know, NFE's got 61 subs to 600. Man. He's got 539 right now. we got to help him get there. If anybody has to subscribe to the Strike Zone, yeah, please do. Yeah, I'm, what am I, 100 and something to 21K? I can't believe it. Man. I really can't believe it. I'm so grateful for everybody that supports the channel. I really, really am. We're at, you know, 174 subs away from 21K. So hopefully we'll get there soon. Uh, uh, go to two games. Nice, Aiden. Very nice. Yeah, Houston Astros are, they're stinking right now, Josh. They really are stinking. Man. <laughs> and, you know, the Boston Red Sox are hurting too. I mean, they lost Trevor Story for the season, so their infield defense took a massive hit. And um, so, I mean, even, you know, they're, it's just, it's uncharacteristic for a lot of teams. You know, the Dodgers, everybody was saying they were going to be run away with everything, but they're 
they don't have a massive lead in the Mer in the National League West. You know, I'm look. I'm gonna pull it up here. Look at the standings. The Dodgers are 12 and nine. They're only a game ahead of the Padres, or 11 and 10. So, right there, Milwaukee's 11 and six. Atlanta's 12 and five. So, and the uh, Yankees are 13 and six. Baltimore Orioles are 12 and six. Cleveland Guardians 12 and six. Texas Rangers 10 and nine. So those are the division leaders all across the board. So, I know, Anaphobia. I know. I'd love to get to 21K soon. Be definitely a celebratory moment. So, and you you get in the 600 too, man. It'll be a celebratory moment too, man. Joseph, I mean, I personally, you know, I think they need to phase in DJ LeMahieu. Um, you know, if, if look, if Glaber Torres is not hitting, but Oswaldo Cabrera is, then I would sit Torres sometimes for DJ. But DJ could also back up Anthony Rizzo to give Anthony Rizzo a little bit of a rest on occasion to it, whether it be a DH day or an off day, where you don't really have the luxury right now because DJ's not here. So, um, and just like some of the other infielders are, Birdie, he plays first base too. He's on the injured list too. So DJ gives them a lot more uh, versatility. And from what we're hearing, um, he thinks it's going to – He's going to need maybe four or five games. That's it. So we'll see if that's true. But Robert Stevenson's done for the season. Is he really, Jack? My God. Seriously? Let's see. This is just brutal, man. It's absolutely brutal. Let's have a look here. Man, a lot of pictures are going down. Robert Stevenson, yeah, Stevenson. Missed 2024 with an elbow injury. Angels reliever. My goodness. We were talking about him as well. As an end for agency. That sucks, man. He, yeah, they just signed him to a three year $33 million deal, too. My God. That's terrible, man. That's that really is awful. No. What? Call through by for seventy five feet, and he's feeling good. Um, next next week he's going to throw consecutive days. Um, he'll throw more often next week. So he's at the very they're progressing him slowly, and he's not he's not eligible to come off the aisle until the end of May anyway. So they have time to ease him into things, which will be good. But yeah, well, so the thing, yeah, I mean DJ, they would be wise to sit Torres instead of Cabrera. If Cabrera's still hitting the ball. Um, I wouldn't say Cabrera for DJ. I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? I, I'll, I'll and Cabrera's versatility because he plays the infield and the outfield. DJ just plays multiple infield positions, so they have different subsets of versatility there. But um, both of them are going to be valuable. Both of them are going to be valuable. And again, yeah, DJ's a pro, two-time batting champ, and again, you know he brings different value here. He's got good plate discipline too. He's got good defense in the infield. So and he's you know he's a pretty good. Uh, on base percentage guy who can hit the ball as well. So he'll bring value here. And he's again a good veteran teammate. Veteran leader. So I don't um I don't know if they're gonna DFA Grisham to make room for Dominguez. I think I I don't think it's wise to assume that Dominguez is just gonna take somebody's spot right off the bat. He's gotta he's gotta prove himself in the minors again. He's gotta work his way through the system. And Grisham's got one more year left of control. So maybe Grisham gets traded, but Dominguez is not going to just take somebody's spot that easily. Not. So, just like I'm saying the same thing with DJ. Uh, you know, DJ should not just come here and take somebody's spot. Especially if the player is playing well. But we'll see. You know. Yeah, I mean, Rodon had um, 101 pitches through four innings yesterday, Joseph. Yeah. It was just ineffective. So... Very ineffective, but I was just where he had two two games, two good games before that. So, you know, he's bound to have one, not a good game. So, yeah, hundred percent. I don't see any. He's definitely out playing towards this year. So far at this point, yes. But I'll say it again: Dominguez has to earn his spot back. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Birdie. I don't know. I mean, Clay Holmes is. Um, Clay Holmes is pretty good right now as a closer. Birdie could be a setup man. I mean, you know, Ramon Nacho's been pitching well since he's been back. 
Ian Hamilton, even though he walked a few guys today, we have a couple of guys here who could represent pretty good combinations with Clay Holmes. So um, I think the, the, the bullpen hasn't found their groove yet, but they're still pitching pretty well. No. Yeah, the Astros are terrible right now. I'm not ruling them out, though. Their, their team is good enough, and uh, they're, they're activating Justin Verlander this weekend, so he'll be back with them too. So he's going to give them a shot in the arm. And Verdugo started to pick it up. He had multiple doubles. Yeah, yeah. Yep, stellar defense. You know, quietly producing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Efrost. And we got some good news on Tommy Canely, too. He's, um, where is it? I just got something on Tommy Canely. He's on his way back as well. Give me one second here. I'll pull it up. But Canely and Efrost are the two relievers that, uh, are scheduled to come back. Here we go. This is reporting. Tony Canley cost, tossed the bullpen yesterday in Tampa. Canley needs to throw another bullpen or two, and then he was going to advance to facing live hitters. So, And Brian Hoke reported, Garrett Cole play catch again today in New York, his first time doing so on back-to-back -back days. And there's no set day for Cole to get on a mound yet, but he continues to build stamina, and he's working his way back. So, you know, any good news, I will take on these guys. Any encouraging news. So, what's up, CeeLo? What is good? <laughs> yeah, it was a fantastic win. I love the come from behind, you know, and again, again, this like Yankees team is not showing, they're not laying down, they're showing fight, you know, they've been quietly persistent and just clawing their way back, you know, and it's a great way to come back after a three game losing streak, most definitely. So, yeah, Verdugo's batting average slowly going up. Slowly going up. Yep. Uh, CeeLo, when John Sterling announces retirement, um, they're going to honor him on Saturday at the stadium. That's what I know right now. So that's what we know right now. Uh, me too. Me too, Concierge. Since we trained, since we traded for him, I thought it was going to be a sneaky good trade. Mm hmm. And that's the thing too, Mark. Like you know, even in the beginning of the season, they weren't, you know, uh, hitting for Matt's numbers, but they were hitting clutch, right? Hitting, getting timely hits, and they're starting to do that again. And again, even the best lineups in baseball are going to have a couple of days where they just don't have it, you know. So, yeah, I wouldn't have traded uh, Schmidt for Verdugo last year, and if he, I mean, I don't think it would have. Uh, made the difference it, it, you know, people thought it was going to make, but I wanted to keep Schmidt here because he got four years of control left. And now they, you know, they they didn't give up a, a starting piece, starting rotation player for for uh, for Dugo. I'm I'm happy that they did that. You know? <clears throat> but yeah, if Verdugo's not hitting, yes, he does. Jackie draws a walk. He hits with you know with the glove. He's an elite defender. So um, and he does look see he does look comfortable. He's just he's got that. Aura to him, the swag to him. So does Soto, man. So does Soto. So, yeah. Yeah, same here, I think. Me too. And Doogie, yeah, exactly, Kenneth. <laughs> That's right. Again, like, these are the types of wins that we need the Yankees to. We need to see him more. So, working on Odor is probably in AAA right now, Eden. Um, he's probably playing in AAA. Yeah, I mean, they don't really need him right now anyway, so. Um, legal, I mean, yeah, secondhand, I'm telling you. Legalize sticky stuff to minimize pitchers. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helped them grip the ball, especially especially on cold days, like when it's just hard to grip the ball. I mean, it didn't give them other, you know, any other advantages, so, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, CeeLo, man, I appreciate that, man. It's just, I mean, it's those types of things, these types of conversations, Celo, that I think are important to have because it's, you know, it's the Yankees' defenses also need to pick things up. It's one of the things they need to get better at right now, right? Just like resting starters on occasion. Even if you rest them once every 15 games, they're still going to play 145 to 150 games. But it also gives opportunities for the guys that are on the bench to play, right? So there's an irregular flow of guys and guys aren't going super stale. So, but you're right. The defense, they, they need to tighten things up defensively. 
hundred percent, man. There he is, the king of Texas is in the house. Texas Buckeye, my friend. Yes, indeed. We got the king. We got the prime minister. We got the, the big dogs in here tonight. Appreciate this, man. Oh, I appreciate that, Kenneth, man. Thank you, sir. Always appreciate the kind words. I appreciate you. Appreciate all of you for spending, you know, on a late Wednesday night with me. I won't keep you that long, but I definitely wanted to come up and celebrate this, celebrate this come from behind win that we needed, that the Yankees needed, and we the fans needed this too. So we definitely did. I think Nestor and Gil and Hill will pitch better. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time, but yeah, I do. Aiden, I do. Hill's coming off Tommy John, so he, you know, he's he will have some command stuff, but he's throwing, you know, ninety eight to one hundred miles an hour. So he's has to harness his command. His arm is clearly healthy. So, but the command thing is, you know, a usual issue when people come back from Tommy John. So, um, yeah, and they are, yeah, exactly. NFA. They are off tomorrow. So the guys all get a rest day um, before Tampa comes to town. So, and let's see if we have, are the pitching matchups already up? For, let's see, for Friday? I don't know. Rays Yankees. Oh, yeah. Tyler Alexander versus Clark Schmidt. Rays Yankees. So they're playing at 7.05 p.m. Yankee Stadium. No. <clears throat> uh, we don't know. Yeah, I mean. There's way too many injuries secondhand with the pitchers, so this is why. I mean, this is why, like, the, you know, the Yankees got like Luke Weaver and got some of these other guys. They they traded for JT Brubaker. They have converted starters here that can act as long relief. So, which and I, I, I I'm, I've been a proponent of long relief for a long time because they serve as security blanket for starting pitchers and the relievers. It's it can, the difference between you know using eight players in a, eight pitchers in a game or three. You know, save a hell of a lot of arms, long relief guys. So I hope they use JT Brubaker when he comes back here. Um, I hope they use Luke Waver, Weaver more often too. So, um, and I, yeah, no, let's get those thumbs up. Again. If anybody hasn't hit that like button, please do, gang. We always try to get to 100 if we can. So I appreciate that. Um, Schmidt, Nestor, Hill, I think you're right. I think you're right, NFA. Probably in that order. <clears throat> Probably in that order. Unless they finagle it and go Schmidt, Hill, Nestor, or something like that. So we'll see. But it's pro it's probably that order. But yeah, Jan Carlos Stanton, he's got his fifth home run now. Um, I think Soto's got his maybe his fourth. So Lou Trevino's still a couple months away, Aiden. Still a couple months away. Scott E. Frost and Tommy King will be likely be back before Trevino. No. Yeah, Cabrera had a good stop at their base today. He really had a great stop. He did save us some runs. So, you know, I, I he's not an elite defender, but I like when he makes great plays. So, and that was a great play. Absolutely great play. So, uh, same, Jack. I mean, I, I've been pushing for Nestor Cortez to be like a spot starter or a long relief, kind of like a Luke Weaver or something like that. But, you know, I, my guess is since they did not add two starting pitchers, that's probably why Cortez has not done that yet. So, um, yeah, Volpe's, you know, Volpe's looking hell of a lot better than he did last year. He's taking his, he's taking his next step in his development. So, and I think Clark Schmidt's doing the same thing. As long as we take the next step in their development, then, you know, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. You know, <clears throat> yeah, Tyler, they're saying today that potentially five games max for DJ in rehab uh, before he officially comes up. So. Um, yeah, hope he's defenses, you know, and he was in the gold glove last year. So, um, you know, he, he's been pretty stellar with the glove too. He's had a couple of issues throwing the ball, but it's also a combination of Rizzo, you know, having the hard times coming up with the ball as well. So that's one of the things that they need to tighten up defensively. Volpe and, and, and Torres clear, obviously. So, um, yeah, DJ, yeah, that's right in the thing. First rehab game that's uh or uh, tomorrow or the next day, so and he's he's close. He's close. So when DJ comes back, I don't it's a good question, CeeLo. I don't know. 
maybe Jemai Jones, since they're not really playing him anyway. Um, my guess is Jemai Jones will be the guy. It doesn't make any sense to move Cabrera or Torres right now. So so that would be my guess, too. I think that would be the corresponding roster move, Jemai Jones, I think. I think. So but we'll definitely see. Schmidt, Cortez, and Hill for the race series. All right. There it is, Talbot. And if he confirmed, Jay, good evening, Jonathan. We did a late night celebratory live stream, so I'm not going to keep everybody on that long, but I definitely want to celebrate it with you guys and gals. You know, it was a good come from behind win that we needed, that they needed. So I'll take that. You know, Stanton went deep. I mean, it was like a moonshot deep. Soto went deep. So Judge with the huge clutch hit in the bottom of the ninth and top of the ninth. They went from 4-2 down to 6-4 up. So, yeah, Jonathan, I didn't expect to come on. You know, I these 3 o'clock games make it hard for me to go live because it's it ends right around dinner time and I have to, you know, prepare dinner for everybody. So, I, I it makes it hard for me to do that. Um, so, I, you know, I wanted to get on late tonight before I went to bed and, you know, um, celebrate with you all. Yeah, see, he's definitely taking advantage, taking advantage of the playing time, which, you know, that's the right way to do it if you can do it. So he's taking advantage of it. He's playing well. He's keeping himself in the game. So that's the way to do it. You know, and I, I, I hope Labor Torres can do that soon, too. I really do. Because we could use his bat as well. You know. Hey, Chris, man, what's good, my friend? <laughs> so to shoot for you. Yeah, man. He's gonna, if he keeps playing like this, the lead dude's going to get the moon, man. <laughs> yeah, Buckeye. I mean, right now, I mean, got to leave Oswaldo alone, man. 100%. Jack, man, this guy, you got to do it, man. Gordon Ramsay, I'm saying. I cook a lot. I come from my, you know, uh, I have a culinary, <laughs> a little bit of a culinary side of my dad's side of the family. So. Uh, yeah, I am the cook of the house, so. But yeah, and Gordon Ramsay is my favorite chef, actually, by the way, Jack. So, <laughs> yeah, he's a great chef. The look, uh, yeah. He, yeah, I saw that, Michael. Yeah, he was like, damn it. But then, thankfully, Soto threw that guy out of second base. That was, that was key to bailing out Torres, 100%, Michael. It's a great point. So, yeah, I expect DJ back in a week or so. So, and, you know, I do think based on the roster, Jemai Jones is probably going to be the guy that they option out or DFA. My, that's my guess. That's my guess. What would you folks guess? Who do you folks, who do you think? You the cook to Texas? What's your go-to, Buckeye? What's your go-to? What's your go-to meal? Yeah, I mean, the problem with Torres' defense is it, you know, it offsets his offense, but he doesn't have any offense right now, so he looks just, he doesn't look good right now. But I'm glad he got that hit late in the game. So, and yeah, Victor Gonzalez is a good bullpen on He is. He is. Oh, I love Brandon Moore. I love Gordon Ramsay. Love him. He's fantastic. My 900, I'm telling you, say, so though. Know, yeah. You just got to keep adding the money. And that, that walk he took, oh, my God. So steak or burgers or chicken, yeah, I make those. Sean, I, I like to grill ribeye um, or skirt steak. My my daughters love skirt steak, so uh, when I put a little chimichurri or something like that on there, it's fantastic. Ribeye steak, I love it. That Ribeye is my favorite cut, Texas, my favorite cut. Lasagna. Concierge, I make a four cheese and two meat lasagna. Um, takes me a while to make, but it's my my family loves it. I got ricotta, I got um, cream cheese, parmesan, and uh, I'm missing one. Shredded mozzarella, and then I do um, sausage and ground beef, and I and then you add obviously the sauce and everything else in there. With, with a little basil flakes, and it is divine. And with the regatta, it's nice and creamy. Oh, my God. 
Eggplant parm. Can't go wrong with eggplant parm either, Jack. No. Do I think Wells? I Sam Sarah, honestly, I think I think they need to play Wells more in order to work on his offense. They need to play him more. They need to start him more over Trevino. I understand why they like to start Trevino. He's got a rapport with a lot of the pitchers and you know, he's an elite game caller, but Wells, I think, would be better suited to play a little bit more. So yeah, it's it's hard. If you butcher a ribeye, you got no place in the kitchen, man. Like ribeye is, oh my god, so good. Velveeta mac and cheese with a hammer. You guys are gonna, you folks are making me hungry now. Poteet is another one. So no, I don't think they're gonna get a shot at Weaver's role. Um, Weaver's Weaver's not going anywhere. Beater could be another guy. Um, <coughs> Poteet, I think, is gonna be another guy too. It'll be another guy. To get you know, compliment Weaver. Um, I don't think they're gonna. <clears throat> I think Beater's better suited for the bullpen um, because of his repertoire. So I can see him being a bullpen piece, and he throws hard. Um, and Warren, I think that he's gonna be the other guy. Like if they move Nestor Cortez to the rota to the bullpen at some point, or Hill to the bullpen potentially as in late relief, then I think Warren's gonna be the guy they bring up. And they haven't brought him up yet because they're going to get an extra year of service time in a few weeks if they keep him out, if they keep him in AAA until like mid May. So that's one reason why they haven't called up Bill Warren yet. So Trevino definitely came through today. Yep. I'm telling you, Buckeye. If you get a booth at the stadium, man. We would we would clean up. You could do the ribeyes. I'll do the lasagna. I cook pretty. I cook mean lollipop land chops. Oh man. You guys are making you guys are really making me hungry. I'm gonna be like 900 pounds. I keep doing it. <laughs> uh, oh. but, <laughs> man, if we did a booth at Yankee Stadium, you guys, we can all do we can all do rotations, cooking, you know, and then Concierto can come in and cook his lasagna. You can just do rotate and like think about it. like today we're gonna have this. People are like, oh my god, like a different variety every single day. Like that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think you. I think uh, you always. I, I think Warren will be up before that. I think he'll be in mid-May. I'm not really concerned about Caleb Ferguson yet. It's a small sample size. Um, let's see. I'm gonna pull up his stats here. Mm -hmm. He's only two with a five eighty-seven, seven strikeouts. So. Not flashy stats, not sexy at all, but I, I think he'll be fine. But you oh, Kenneth, man, I'm telling you, a little lot about little lie about lamb chops, you a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of garlic on there. Oh, oh, oh baby. Mm-hmm. You stole a ball from Stein. How'd you get in the Steinbrenner's office in 77? That's the bigger question, Richie. How did you get in there? Yeah, lamb chops are fantastic, man. Lamb, lollipop lamb chops are just, um, I like. I mean, I like a lamb, you know, leg of lamb too. Would I replace Sterling if, if, if I ever get an opportunity? I would. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think they, I don't think I'd be high up on their list of guys, but if I ever got the chance, I would, Jonathan. Hell yeah. Goodness, goodness gracious, I would. I would embrace that role to the, to the fullest. So, Sam so Sarah, yeah, I mean, you know, he's definitely working on improving his defense. Um, he, he, his offense will come around. We don't really need a lot of offense from the catcher, to be honest. We need more offense from Gleyber Torres than we need from any one of our catchers. So, you know, see the second session we got selling a t shirt? Yeah, Richie. <laughs> I don't know secondhand. I don't know who's going to be available, to be honest with you, at the trade deadline. Starting pitchers. I have no idea. That's a good, I mean, it's a good question. I just don't know who's going to be available right now. Especially if, I mean, if starting pitchers are going to pitch well and their teams are contending, then, you know, I don't think so. Did I have, what happened to the young Twins fan in Baltimore? What happened, Sean? You met the Boston 89? Nice, CeeLo. Nice, baby. Love it. 
<laughs> it's good to hear the instill anything. Um, <laughs> oh man, but I mean that's gangster stealing the ball from Steinbrenner's office. That's pretty ballsy. Pretty freaking ballsy. Montgomery may be a rental. He's on a one year deal with an option, so he could be, but if the Diamondbacks are contending, then you know, and he hasn't pitched for them yet. So let's see what's the Diamondbacks record here. Arizona Diamondbacks are they're nine and nine and ten, so they're only like two games down. It's pretty the, the NL West is pretty tight. So um I'm definitely gonna miss Sterling Call games. He was he's a legend, man. Sixty plus years in the booth, like let me get any better than that. He's a, he's an all time Yankee great. He should be in the they're gonna honor him on Saturday in Yankee Stadium and thankfully maybe he'll get a plaque in Monument Park or something. I'm really but he deserves his he'll get he'll get his due. He deserves it. But yeah, I'm gonna miss him calling it the oh, Yankees win the oh, Yankees win like that's, that's for classic. Like, who the hell is going to replace that? You know? So, George loved his calzones. No, I didn't realize. I didn't know that. That's cool. Who, the, who doesn't like the cow? Like, calzones are fantastic. I plain calzone. I just dip it in the, in the marinara. Oh, my God. With the ricotta cheese. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Stein Brothers office. You saw jerseys, gloves. Pennant trophy, ball on the desk. Oh man, you got balls, Richie. You got some balls, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> Byron signed the ball for a young fan, but someone snatched the ball from the usher hand. Twins, ah, oh, it's unbelievable. Feel bad for the kid, but watch the kid get a case of balls not signed from the team. Like, you know, these they're gonna rally around this kid. Like why would why would somebody snatch it from the from, from the kid? Like, come on, that's messed up. That's messed up. <laughs> Got the Seinfeld references. I love it. Game ball rubbed up with half moon bank mushroom. Oh my god, <laughs> that's, a, that's a classic story though. He had a whole yeah. I wonder who's gonna who's gonna. Replace Sterling's call for so I like for Juan Soto. Somebody's got to come up with something good. Pepe Pizza. Oh God, yeah. I'm a huge pizza. I, I I don't know about you guys and gals. I just eat plain slices. I don't put any toppings on my slices. Just plain slice. I put a little bit of garlic uh, powder on there. That's it for me. I don't put anything on my pizzas. One was first pen. The Chambliss ball. Oh, God, yeah. Big time home run. Rockies, Marlins, and White Sox. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe. Maybe the Mariners, but the Mariners lost a couple pitchers too, so, like, I don't know. There's a couple of new ones, you know. I mean, like, you got Swisher in the booth now, too. You got Girardi in the booth, like, John Flaherty, so. Dude, that's all I do, MFA. Plain cheese pizza, man. I don't, I don't tamper with it. It's just, it's a classic. Like, I don't want to mess with it. Like, I feel like I'm disrespecting the pizza by putting all that stuff on it. I just like it straight up raw dog like that. Fantastic. But Jack likes double cheese, onions, garlic powder. I mean, that all. Sicilian is fucking awesome too. Sicilian is awesome. Meat lovers, pizza stuff, crust, double egg. Damn, you guys go serious. All right, well that's cool. That's cool. That's all right. Ball ended up going down a sewer on the North West Corner, sixteenth and seventh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> itchy man. <laughs> Luis Castillo from the Mar. Well, it depends on how he's pitching. He's on an expensive contract, though, Michael. So it's something to keep in mind. So he's on an expensive, and it would just started his extension. He's in the first year of an extension, like five years. I think he's making like twenty three million dollars a year, something like that. So he's a guy they might look at. I same here, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Same here, Anafi. Like I just, just give me two slices. That's I'm I'm good. Two slices. 
I get my drink, and I'm a happy camper, NFE. Happy camper. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he might be available. A piss. Yeah. Oh, boy. He's bringing, he's bringing it now. Texas is bringing it, man. A pizza. Oh, I, I just say, I get two slices plain. Good. You leave it, yeah, I mean, where are you going to find a good calzone that's not on the East Coast? That's not in New York. Like, calf. You know, pizza, calzone. That's the New York thing, baby. You know, it's definitely. I think he's in open with this. The guy that stole a ball from Steinbrenner's office. Oh, my God. Richie, you got some, <laughs> you got some freaking... Oh man. Well, I love you for doing that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Bucks and both teams are water for royal treatment. Good. Good. It's a classy move. How do you do that to a young like a little kid? Like that's messed up. You know? It's a little kid's opportunity. So I'm glad he got the royal treatment. I hope he gets, you know, lots of souvenirs and lots of good stuff too. New Haven, I heard, had some pretty decent pizza. Yeah. Yeah. I heard. There's a couple spots in Jersey, too, that have a couple of good. But New Haven is known for, like, up there for having top-notch pizza. Pizza wings, yeah. I mean, pizza wings and calzone, yeah, you can't come on with that. That's Super Bowl food right there. Well, uh, I mean, pizza, to me, is New York City pizzas. I mean, it's in Brooklyn, too. Like, some of the best pizza you'll ever have in your life it's phenomenal so we'll see let's bring in some here and keep pizza and the sand sand view section of the bonus is so good you need a classic rainbow i see they have, they have good stadium pizza all right well, that's good to know CeeLo. now i'm gonna have to try that i'm gonna have to try it. i've never tried their sushi either i'm a huge sushi fan I, you know, I generally don't do the chicken tenders and the fries and stuff. I, I usually do a gyro or something like that. But I got I mean, if you, you know, I want to try the pizza and I, I definitely want to try the sushi. So, but <laughs> yeah, Richie's repenting, man. He's repenting for his sins, man. You know, the Chambliss ball, which never went into the stands. Yeah, I remember that, dude. Chambliss ball, but he's repenting for his sins, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Yeah, how is the pizza out there? I mean, is it at least decent, Consigliani? Is it at least decent? You know, in I mean, I you know, I don't know if you're gonna find any pizza in Texas. Like, is does 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 Los Angeles hang with? New York in terms of pizza, like you know, Texas, I'm not surprised. I mean, they're known for their barbecues and their meats. I I can't see them coming up with New York pizza. Like California, I can. LA, I can see that. No. And if he's got a pizza place over here, 20 minutes from in Colorado, mom and pop from Italy and moved to New York and see you see. Or they got the New York ties, baby. Italy and the New York ties. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that, man. That's fantastic. Yankee pizza, seven seven dollars for a pie. That's it. Six train. Oh man. Cali's got great Mexican. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, well, I would agree. I agree with CeeLo here. No one has pizza like New York. That's it's gets hard to deny. You know. See, this is the key. Considering New York water, it's the water that they use that helps determine the yeah the pizza crust and how they do it. Yeah, that's why these people who move pizzerias they take their water uh, machine with them. It's kind of crazy, but it's it's a, such an important part of making pizza. So. San Francisco almost has real pizza. 
Damn. Julian's Pizza in San Antonio. Oh, Texas guy. He's bringing up a contender here. All right. Can they hang Texas? Can they can they can they hang like legit? You know, we need to know about these other places that if we're in Texas, you know, we can find a good pizza place. So Julian's in San Antonio. All right. All right. Seattle has New York style time pizza owned by I uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Old clay stoves and it's definitely in the water. Yep. See these people old school, man. Old school, baby. Stoves are seasoned. Yeah, man. Florida's got a lot of wood fire pizza, but yes, they do. I doubt I do now. <laughs> oh, damn. That's a good analogy. Comparing East Coast food to the rest of the country, it's like comparing Major League Baseball to women's softball. <laughs> damn. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I got to tell you, I mean, the best blend of food all across the board to accommodate all the pallets I found in New York. Yeah. I mean, overseas, best food I've ever had, best food I've had is probably in Paris. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Wink, yeah, I've had pizza from Jersey. It's a couple of good spots in New Jersey, South Jersey. Yeah. No, I mean, if there's good New York pizza, you got to have it. It's like, it's like a must. It's a must. Mazza Pizza in Mazza Pizza in LA. All right, you see, we need this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I was craving pizza, and I, you know, I didn't. I had a chicken farm today. I didn't eat pizza. My wife had pizza. We took the girls out for dinner last night. My wife and the girls had pizza. I didn't have it. I had shrimp scampi with pasta. Um, I should have freaking pizzas. I was craving it today, and I didn't eat it. Mm. Uh, street gyros in New York are now, that's all. Yeah, falafels and uh, there's nothing like them. The shish kebabs, the dirty water hot dogs, like in Central Park. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh. If you like, if you like, if anybody likes pastrami or corned beef, you got to go to Katz's Deli in, in New York. That place is the best, probably the best you'll ever have. It's, it is unbelievable. Katz's Deli. Best Italian bakeries. Uh, New York's got a couple of good ones too, Kenneth. Mulberry Street Plaza, Pizza in LA. All right, you see? Council Yuri's got some contenders too. It's nice to know that they have them out there, man. It's nice to know. It's nice to know that some of these are inspired by New York too. It's fantastic. Yeah. I like this <laughs> Pepitone's mint. There's a faux place that just opened up where uh, two miles from my house. I haven't tried it yet, faux, but I'm having, I'm hearing good things about it, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's you, know, you find some either mom pops or independent restaurants and like independent small businesses. That's where I, that's where you'll find the sneaky good food. Oh. Yes, you do, Texas. I have had steaks in Texas. I mean, they are, I mean, you got the tomahawks at the size of our head. So they're freaking huge steaks. And they're good. And the ribs. This the bar, Texas barbecue is like, man, it's at the top of the at the top of the scale. The absolute top of the scale. Baklava. Oh. And if he, you're killing me, making me highlight like baklava. Uh, oh, damn. You guys are really making me hungry. I swear, if, if I was in, you know, in near restaurants in Manhattan right now, I'd probably be 900 pounds. I swear. <laughs> Food at Buenos Aires, Argentina, spectacular, best city ever. Buen all right, Argentina, all right. Thanks, man. Oh, Kobe Beefia. Yeah. I had it in uh, Tokyo. It was fantastic. Kobe beef is phenomenal. Uh, baklava is good. You, you can't go wrong with baklava. Like, how do you go wrong with it? And it's like, dang. Oh, dude, cat, remember? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, cats is, is, the prices have gone up, but it's, you will never eat a sandwich that good. That sandwich is so damn good. 
you're in Houston, but you order barbecue from OC, you find the spots, right? You find the right spots, you bring the right food, you know, and they become mainstays. Like I order, you know, I order my sandwiches for a couple from a couple of places, my my pizza from a couple places. Like, and I'm I'm pretty particular, and I generally just stay what's working, you know, especially with food. Like it's you know. <laughs> uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna be the food guy, Anafi. Yeah. Well, are you gonna bring some more stuff, man? Come on, man. Bring some more stuff. Uh huh. Good Mex. Oh yeah, good Mexican food in Cali. Good Mexican food in Queens, New York as well. Manhattan as well. I, mean, I like Mexican. I like Salvadorian food, Colombian food, Peruvian, Dominican. I like ceviche. I like the steaks. That Dominican restaurants make and the, the, the chuletas that the, the, the Puerto Rican restaurants make. Oh my God. I love Spanish food. Fogo the Child, the steakhouse. Oh goodness. The Brazilian steakhouse. You got to watch out. Like people go over there and they, they spend so much time at the salad bar and then they're so full and there's no room for the steak. I'm like, you don't go to a steakhouse, Brazilian, ste Brazilian steakhouse to go eat salad bar. Like that's, that's one time I'm. Bypassing the salad bar, like, uh, unless there's shrimp cocktail there or little mozzarella, like, I'm staying away from the salad bar unless I have a small, small salad. But I'm going to a steakhouse for steak, baby. Got the good, I love Dominican food. Kenneth, I love Dominican food. Bruce Banner into. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Enchiladas, empanadas, empanadas, yeah. Pupusas, all these food, Richie, like Cuban, I mean, everything from ceviche. Um, yeah, exactly. No salad bar and steak. That's a sin if you go to a steakhouse and have a salad bar. Like, it's crazy. Brazilian, Brazilian I mean, those red light, those little red and green things. It's like, I want to stay, I want to stay at green, but they keep bringing the freaking things and they keep chopping them. And I'm like, you know, how do you not have. How do you stop? You can't. Photo show has locks now? I didn't realize they had locks. I like locks. I do. Octopus ceviche. I've never had octopus ceviche. I've had every other kind of type of ceviche, not octopus. <laughs> Looks like we're all making each other hungry here. <laughs> I will wrap, them, <laughs> wrap this up in a second here, but... This is fantastic talking about food. It really is fantastic. I love it. Oh, expensive. Oh, yeah. Steakhouse. I mean, yeah. You know, like you go to the best steakhouses, they're going to be. I go to Pete Luger's in Brooklyn. Um, that is Tostones. Oh, yeah. Uh, bread fruit. No, I haven't had it from bread fruit, but for plants and you squash them, you fry them. Yeah. I eat Tostones and I dip them in sour cream. So, I've never heard of from breadfruit though. Is it worth trying, Jack? Texas to Brazil, you see this? Ah, you can find tech. You can find Brazilian steakhouses everywhere. It's wonderful. Oh, calamari! Oh my God, I love calamari. Oh, huh. yeah, with marinara, or sometimes I get this, um, this like uh, green, like a garlic aioli. Oh, it's so good. So good. Turkey with the head on the side. It's well done. Oh my god. That's crazy. I need the head. Gangster, Richie. Gangster. Mofongo. I, I love from Mofongo secondhand. Mofongo is fantastic. And it, I mean, I love my, my tradition is arroz con pollo and, and you know, alas. Maduros, like just the rice, the beans, and maduros, either a chuleta with some garlic on it or some chicken, roasted chicken, or one of their, their skirt steaks. Oh, super. It's really hard to beat that stuff. See, that's not bad. Panama Brazilian steakhouse, $50 a person, that's not bad. Now I need to try octopus ceviche. I haven't tried it. I tried octopus, but not octopus ceviche. <laughs> I don't know if I can eat a bird looking at me either when I eat it. It reminds me of the, the, the show, uh, the movie Christmas Story at the end. 
when they chop the head off at the Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> That's great. Classic scene. Classic scene. Frankie Johnny's in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. my mother loves cannolis, you know. That's my mom's that's my mom thing, the cannolis. Yeah. Oh. Head of a lobster, damn. No chilled monkey brain. I can't I don't think I can do chilled monkey brains. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Manny K S Manigot. Manigot. Yeah. People don't know. Manicot is how he's pronouncing, not Manicotti. Manicotti. Yeah, that's true, Richie. Uh, and if he, that scene was fantastic. Classic scene. Classic scene. Ceviche, I mean, Peruvian ceviche is probably the best I've ever had. Hands down. You know. And now I need to try bread, breadfruit tostones. Now I need to try this. Bull balls. I haven't had bull balls from Spain. What I did have from Spain, I spent some time in Madrid with my wife. Um, we had <clears throat> we had paella, and their paella was on freaking believable. We had a paella station at our wedding. You know, and uh, we, I, well, we love paella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Live in Atlanta, they have numbers. Damn, what kind of food do they have in Atlanta, Cielo? We got, we got to hook you up. We got to find something good for you, man. Or if we're all in the game, if, we, if we're ever up in the game at the same time, we got to hook you up with some good food up in the Bronx, Cielo. We got to hook you up, man. I tell you, oh, man. Paella's, I love paella. Love it. Sweet shrimp soup. Oh, followed by fried shrimp head. Must eat the head in one bite. I'm a huge sushi guy, Consigliani. I love sushi. Tostones with garlic sauce. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite food at Yankee uh, Yankee Stadium? <sighs> Probably just your, bait, your, your straight up hot dog. Straight up hot dog. And I just do uh, sauerkraut and mustard, and I'm straight up just. Basic like that. Um, I do straight up a hot dog. Richie, man, I appreciate that, man. Thank you, man. We always like to have a good time here, man. We always like to have a good time. It's good, and it's good to get to know you folks like this. We talk about these different things. Uh, Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain oysters. Another phenomenal thing. I, sp I mean, I went for I went to a wedding in Puerto Rico. I went to some business meetings in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I've been there quite a few times. Next restaurant called Punucha Panuchas. Google it. Secondhand, I I will make it a point to come down there. You know, next time I'm in Puerto Rico, if I'm in that area, I'll check that place out. Yeah, man. Brandon's in the house. All right, we're good for here, man. Nathan's with a yeah. Oh God, candied onions. I like. That's why I like the Central Park. Dirty water dogs, because you get the you get the mustard, you get the sauerkraut, and you get the sweet onions. Oh my god. Hot dog and garlic fries, which another thing you tell you, how do you beat that? You can't, you can't. Same here, Anna Fima. I love talking with you guys. You and I always have a good rapport, man. Giant shake the White Sox are serving this year. I have not. What's in that bad boy? We did win, Brandon. Yeah, come from behind. We were down 4-2 in the ninth. They came back and won 6-4. It, it was a much needed win by the Yankees, especially heading into an off day, a travel day. So they're going to travel back home now. Tampa comes into town. Oakland comes into town. So, but thankfully we won, Brandon. Yeah. Could you imagine eating six pounds of fries? Oh, my God. Oof. Oh, shit. Koyachi's in Denver. All right. Again, that's how we do it, man. Right? Baseball and food, baby. Sometimes we'll go, sometimes talk about baseball and movies. Sometimes we'll talk about baseball and like other stuff. Like, you know, we like, we, we're well rounded people. We like to talk about different things, get to know each other. And like, you know, that way it's not, it's not always, it's primarily baseball. But when we, when we talk about some things that we're interested in, man, a lot of fun.
Dairy, I had Dairy Queen last night, Brandon. I do the twist um, with the hard chocolate cover, and then I put it upside down in a cup. I have it on a cone. That's my – and then my wife gets a peanut butter cup blizzard. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying, Jack. This we want this we want the show here to be savory. We want it to be enjoyable, man. Right? Baseball and UFC. Yep. UFC 300 this was this weekend. Got a pretty good damn card. So, and uh, you know, we, we like to talk UFC too. We do. Strikes on right. Yeah. Peace and love to you, CeeLo. Appreciate you coming on, man. Always a pleasure. As for the Yankees fan manager, <laughs> 16 ounce campfire milkshake, graham crackers, marshmallows. Oh my God. My favorite. You know what? Like, I do a straight up chocolate milkshake, just like chocolate ice cream, chocolate ice cream thick. Like, that's my favorite, just straight up chocolate. And sometimes, I'll, like, if I go to a, a diner, and I'll get a French toast special or something like that, or a turkey burger deluxe. I'll have the chocolate shake with it. What a freaking combination. It's like it. Oh my God. Phenomenal. Yeah, man. Love combat sports. Freaking love it, man. I'm right with you, NFA. Right with you, brother. Black licorice milk. I haven't had that. I have I've been re I've been resistant to move off of chocolate. You know, the only ice cream I eat is Hagen dazs chocolate. Aside from the twist from uh, Dairy Queen. <laughs> I know I'm kind of getting diabetes too. Serene talking about this stuff. <laughs> Manta leaving his sick. You saw him leaving the 61 El Dorado in the same. Damn. That dude had some big forearms, man. He did. Saturday night? Uh, it's too early to tell, Jonathan. I don't know what I have going on yet, but if I'm available, I'll go live. Yeah. Yeah, Poirier versus Islam. And at a um, late June, <coughs> Dana announced the, the Conor McGregor fight. Yep. Nice. Nice, Richie. Corey's ice cream at the Jersey. I got married in the Jersey Shore. Wink. My wife and I got married in the Shore. Yep. Yeah, the Astros are... They're not playing well, man. It's, it, how do you beat that combo, right? A cheeseburger with, like, fries and a chocolate shake. Like, it's really hard to beat that. That's, a, like, a phenomenal meal. Phenomenal meal. Like my God, Connor's fighting Chandler. Yeah, yeah, Michael Chandler, Michael Chandler. Five round fight. I think it's June twenty ninth, June twenty sixth, or something like that. Yep. You patted Bruno Samar. I got licked in the head by one of the bushwhackers, Richie, in Madison Square. I used to go to Madison Square, uh, Square, Square, Madison Square Garden with my dad all the time to watch WWF. And uh, one of the bushwhackers licked me right in the head. Luke. So, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Jonathan. Love having you on, man. Cheeseburger, onion rings, and a shit. I mean, like, you know, this is like top of the we always We talk about top of the line cuisine here. Only the best. That's how we do it. Yeah, I think it's the last week in June. The last week in June. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Wink, I mean, you talk about the Astros cheating forever because I do. I still think to this day that they, you know, Rob Manfred and baseball covered up for the Astros kind of, and I kind of feel like they're covering up for Shohei Otani right now. You know? I want to see John Jones. I wish John Jones would fight Alistair Overeem. Like that would be a phenomenal fight. Um, I I don't know any top heavyweight who could do. You know what heavyweight's going to beat John Jones? Like, I mean, I would have loved to have seen him fight Fedor. 
when Fedor was in his prime, I think Fedor would have beat him. Um, but it's sad. Yeah. John Jones a beast, man. He's an absolute beast. I know that um, he was supposed to fight. Um, what's his name? Jordan Blank, the fireman. Oh my god. I forgot his name. But I know there was an injury there, so flying kangaroo. <laughs> oh, I used to watch the British Bulldogs, like the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom. Stipe, Mio chick. That's right, Stipe. That's right. What's my Tyson? What's my opinion on Tyson versus Paul? Like, I wouldn't want to be hit by Mike Tyson. I've seen footage of him training in his mid fifties. I wouldn't want to be hit by him. Do I think <coughs> Paul could catch him? Yeah, but Tyson's going to be one of the harder guys to hit. But I think it's a thirty year difference, so it's just like. But I'm still betting. I still got my money on Mike Tyson. So, Medellin, welcome, Medellin. Shout out to Medellin, Colombia. Jay, shout out. Boxing channel. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Trevor Barra's accuser was charged with fraud. Is it one of his accusers? Yeah, I heard one of them. He's got multiple accusers, but yeah. I heard. Yeah, I mean the Paul brothers. They just and one of them's in WWE. So I Logan is one of them, and Jake is the other one, right? I don't even know which one's fighting Mike Tyson. Is it Jake? So Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford. Why does that name sound familiar? Name sounds familiar, Michael. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I like to watch, you know. I went to WrestleMania 1, Richie, in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, man. Wendy Richter, Hulk Hogan, and the, was it King Kong Bundy was there? Like, who else was there? Was it Mr. T? I mean, it was awesome. Big John Stud, King Kong Bundy. He beat Errol Spencer. Okay, that's right. That's right. That's right. He's a boxer, right? Yeah. Permanent spot for, I mean, yeah. I haven't, I haven't tried Logan's prime trick. I haven't tried it. I like, I like Javante Davis. He's a good looking fighter. He's one of, he's a protege of Mayweather. Uh -oh. Fajita snack? Oh, God, yeah. 19,000 bets. Yeah, I secondhand, I, I don't, I don't buy the story that Otani didn't know what was going on. I don't buy it at all. At all. Yeah. Oh, I know, Richie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, but let me let you all go because it's getting late. It's 12.30 on my time. I got to get up early in the morning. So, But I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking baseball, talking fighting, talking food. <clears throat> I love you all for it. It's fantastic. Keep coming back. We're going to keep doing it. Okay? Maybe we'll bring up movies next time. Okay? You can think about what your favorite movies are, who your favorite actors are, who your favorite actresses, and we'll see if we can come up with some movies on those actors and actresses. How about that next time we go live? Have a great night, everybody. Peace and love to all he is. Yankees win, baby. Let's freaking go. Over now.